Hello there. Welcome to Anybody Can Code C++ series. So if you are new to this series, you can click on the card that's above to check out our previous videos. Hi there. Welcome back to the ABC series of C++ from Facebook. So in this particular episode of uh, ABC series, uh, I'll be explaining what exactly the OOPS concepts are, the object oriented programming concepts. Right? So in the last video, we had uh, dealt with uh, recursive functions uh, uh, and all the other things which are required. Uh, so uh, in this particular video, I'll be telling you what OOPS concepts are and uh, furthermore, I uh, will be having certain examples related to it, uh, probably in the next videos and so forth. Right. So when it comes to uh, OOPS concept, so OOPS basically is object oriented program. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of concepts hidden inside uh, this particular, uh, 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 you know, object oriented system. So first of all, let us try to understand what are these concepts and uh, then furthermore moving forward, uh, we will try to implement these concepts in our uh, uh, codes, okay, uh, specifically related to C++. Okay. So uh, there are four main important things when it comes to OOPS case. So the first one is abstraction. Second one is uh, encapsulation, third polymorphism, and the last one is inheritance. Okay, so uh, if you try to Google down the things, you might find a lot of other things as well. Okay, like uh, overloading and uh, all of this stuff. Uh, but these are the uh, very important ones. The main ones is what I can say. So we will deal with these uh, all all these four one by one. So first up, we have got uh, abstraction. Right, so what exactly is the abstraction? So to put it in full term, uh, it is uh, called as data abstraction. Uh, so the definition goes like providing only essential information to the outside world and hiding their background details, right? So which means that uh, only which is required to you will, uh, you know, the code will be uh, letting you use that. And the other things which are not required, it will be hiding it in the background and we cannot uh, uh, see what those things are, right? So we cannot see the operations, we cannot see uh, how the things are working, but uh, we can only see what is happening in the front end, okay? So if I would like to give an example, uh, the use of websites, right? So uh, uh, that's a very beautiful example what uh, uh, you can uh, use data abstraction for. So uh, whichever site you type in any particular browser, you know, be it, uh, uh, Chrome or Firefox or whatever browser you're using. Uh, so let's say you're, you're typing a basic, uh, uh, you know, site, okay, website, okay, W, for example, on the screen, you can see www.google.com. Uh, so uh, when you type this particular address, what happens is the DNS server, okay, it converts it into a specific number, right? So uh, we have uh, specific numbers for every website. So you can see 173.194.36.51, okay? So uh, this specific number is related to a specific website, okay? And once it is converted, it is sent to the, uh, you know, uh, in the background, a lot of process goes on and ultimately you'll be fetching the data of uh, Google site. Okay, you'll be getting the page of uh, uh, Google web search, right? So uh, uh, as uh, you can see, this is sort of a data abstraction here. So whatever is happening in the background, you're not able to notice it, but whatever is happening in the front end, you can just observe that. Uh, you're just typing www.google.com, right? So all these conversion of this uh, uh, characters or uh, uh, the entire string, whatever is happening uh, by the DNS server, we are not able to see it, right? So this is a example of a beautiful example of uh, data abstraction. So uh, one more example, if I'd like to give you uh, a very, very simple example, right? We are just trying to connect it uh, to our day to day lives. So I do not know how many of you know how a fan works, right? But everybody knows how to switch on a, a fan, right? So you just uh, uh, switch it on, you switch it off. Okay. When you switch it on, the fan turns and you switch it off, the fan switches off. Okay, but what happens is exactly the electrical system, the winding and the magnetic force and all that, uh, you know, intricate things. Uh, we, we do not uh, uh, break our heads to understand what exactly is happening, right? So that is a sort of a data abstraction what we uh, see in our day to day lives. And uh, one more example, what I can give is the ATM machine. We just put our numbers uh, over there. We uh, tell the machine that we want uh, uh, so and so, uh, so much money. Okay, and we uh, uh, take it out of the outlet uh, uh, port, okay, of the ATM machine. But do we try to understand what exactly is happening, where the, uh, you know, uh, gears are flipping inside the machine, uh, what is it uh, uh, sending the data to the bank, how is it giving us so much money, we do not uh, break our heads about it, right? So the only thing what matters to us is uh, what is being displayed on the screen and uh, how much money we get out of it, right? So this is again an example of data abstraction. 
and uh, one last uh, uh, an example of a data abstraction is your online uh, uh, shopping sites right so uh, be it uh, any website uh, what happens is you just click on uh, add to cart and uh, deliver to this particular address and what happens after that uh, that is a very big process and right? so these days you can also track your packages right so uh, they say it has entered this particular shipyard uh, in so many days you know it will reach your house and stuff like that uh, but in the previous days uh, they were not able to track it right you, you just have to click on certain things or you can just uh, uh, click on buy option you'll, you'll do the pay uh, sometimes you may not have to do the payment also right so you just click on the buy option and uh, uh, they'll say that approximately a tentative date will be given and uh, you'll be waiting for that right so all these things which are happening in the background you do not worry about it you're just worried about what i want and you just click on it right so this is again a beautiful example of data abstraction so uh, i hope you have uh, understood what exactly a data abstraction is guys you, you will get a lot of examples like this uh, from your day-to-day -day lives and uh, you'll be able to implement the same examples okay if you have understood in uh, your codes as well right so next thing what we've got is uh, encapsulation okay so uh, to define what encapsulation is placing the data and the functions that work on that data in the same place okay so if i would like to give you an example i believe everybody uh, has uh, uh, you know used a bluetooth device right so a bluetooth headset or a headphone or if not you must have at least uh, heard about it or uh, you know uh, thought of buying it right so uh, these days what happens is uh, you need not connect the headphone or the uh, uh, earphone uh, directly to your uh, uh, mobile phones. Uh, they'll have a slot of their own, right? So a chip or a memory card uh, kind of a slot. Uh, you can uh, directly, uh, you know, dump all the songs into the headphones, okay? So if that is the case, uh, uh, you can directly hear the music from the headphones and no connectivity is required for the mobile phones, right? So what's happening over here is, guys, uh, a headphone is basically uh, used to connect to some other device and listen to the songs. But uh, 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 these days, the technology has developed so much that you do not connect it to any device. Directly using the headphones, you can listen to some song. Right? So that is called as encapsulation, where you've got all the functions and the data which is required uh, for the operation. Right? So uh, one more example, what I can give you is a very, very easy example, your uh, uh, medicinal capsules. So all the antibiotics or uh, whatever medicine is required for your, uh, 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 you know, uh, symptoms or to treat your symptoms or treat your diseases, uh, it is uh, put together in a capsule and it is given to you, right? So uh, be it uh, a one variant, be it a multivariant, you do not know it. Okay, you can just see a capsule, but what is present inside the capsule, nobody knows. It. Okay, so this is called as encapsulation. Okay, so the capsule might be treating one disease, the capsule might be treating multiple symptoms, Right. So this is a, a, a very beautiful example of uh, encapsulation. And uh, one more example is uh, your cup noodles. Right. So uh, uh, I hope you're not hungry over there looking at the picture. Right. So uh, a cup noodle, it, it contains all the ingredients. Right. So specifically, if you want to cook a noodle, right, so you you'll have to uh, manually put down all the ingredients into the dish and uh, uh, do all the uh, uh, things and you'll get the uh, end result as a noodle. But let's say if it is a cup noodle, you just have to uh, pour down hot water, keep it there, uh, you know, uh, for some time. And when you open it, your noodles will be ready, right? So this is again an example of uh, encapsulation, a very easy example of encapsulation. And uh, one last example, what I would like to give you is uh, certain apps, right? So uh, these days, there are a lot of apps, guys, which say that they are for this particular purpose, but you go inside that particular app, Okay, you'll have a lot of things inside it. For example, let's say an uh, app is designed for uh, money transactions. But when you get inside that particular app, you'll have uh, options for ordering stuff, uh, ordering your food, ordering uh, uh, you know infrastructures, or be it billing, uh, be it uh, uh, ticket booking, or whatever it is. Ultimately, that app will be a uh, you know encapsulation of all the things what is required in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. So uh, this is one more example of encapsulation, guys. So uh, try, uh, you know, try finding such examples so that you'll be able to connect uh, to the concepts very much. And the next up, what we have is uh, polymorphism. Okay, so poly means many, okay, morph means forms. Okay, so we have uh, in the name itself called as many forms. Okay, so if I have to define this thing, it is called as the ability to use an operator or a function in different ways, in other words, giving different meanings of functions to the operators or functions is called as polymorphism. 
So if you have got confused with the definition, guys, not a problem. I've got one beautiful example over here. Let's say there's a person called as uh, uh, okay. Let's let's call him uh, Robert Downey. Okay. So uh, Robert Downey or uh, Robert. Okay. Let's just keep it as Robert. So if I say there's one person called as Robert, Robert can be a person who's a good family man. Robert can be a person who's a delivery man. Robert can be a person who's a good sales guy. Or Robert can also be a person who's you know good in talking to people, right? So I'm not specifically telling uh, uh, what uh, uh, Robert is supposed to do, but I've just given a common name called as Robert. Right? So this is called as a, a polymorphism. So, uh, you know, uh, the way in which you are uh, able to adapt the things when it comes to uh, doing certain operation, it is called as polymorphous. So one more example, if I'd like to give you the Swiss knife, okay, what you can see on the screen. So this is basically a knife, but it has mul multiple tools in it, right? So if you want to open anything, it has an opener. You want to tweak anything, it has a tweaker, okay, and uh, tweezers and all that stuff. So uh, this is a multi-purpose knife, uh, basically called as a Swiss knife. One more example, what I'd like to give you is a smart TV, right? So uh, these days, TVs are not just, uh, televisions are not just for watching, uh, uh, you know, whatever the uh, cable operators uh, give it to your TVs. You can browse uh, uh, YouTube, you can browse uh, Netflix or uh, whatever it is. So it is basically smart. So you've got all the things, okay? Uh, it adapts to the situation and however it is supposed to do it. Uh, so if I say TV, okay, it does not mean I'm just watching a movie. Okay, TV is also possible uh, uh, for watching a Netflix. Right? To, TV is also possible for uh, browsing certain things over the YouTube. Right? So this is uh, polymorphism. So one tool which gives accessibility to a lot of things. Right? And uh, one last example is your uh, multivariant uh, sofa or bed or chair or whatever you want to call it. Right? So here you can see on the screen, guys, that uh, you know there, there's a bed sort of a thing which can also be used as a chair or a sofa. Right. And also there are the certain times there are compartments uh, uh, below the bed, which can be used to store a lot of, uh, uh, you know, handy stuff. Right. So uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, a very easy example of understanding what polymorphism is. Right. So you've got uh, uh, different forms, okay, with the same name. Right. So that is called as polymorphism. So we'll definitely have a look at the applications, guys. But uh, uh, you know, we're just trying to relate the things to the real world and uh, trying to make you understand. And the last one, what we have is uh, inheritance. A very, very easy uh, uh, thing to understand when it comes to OOPS concept, and a very, very uh, efficient and important OOPS concept. Guys. So, uh, what is uh, inheritance? It is basically a process of forming a new class from an existing class. That is from the existing class called as base class, new class is formed called as derived class. A lot of class terms are here, right? So you do not have to bake your heads, guys, because uh, if, you have, if you do not know what a class is, I'll be definitely telling it to you in the next coming videos. Okay, so in fact, the next video uh, after this, right? So we'll be discussing things in classes and objects and the applications of the uh, OOPS in uh, C++ using uh, your classes and objects, right? So uh, inheritance, if we have not understood still, okay, so inheritance, basically, if I have to give you an example, let's consider the color of the eye, right? So if uh, you've got a parent who has got uh, brown eyes, okay, there are, uh, both the parents are brown eyes. So 100% chance that you'll get a brown eye, right? So if you're, if you're a person who one of your parent is having a blue eye, one of the other parent is having a green eye then there is a 50% chance that you'll get a, uh, you know, uh, one color or the other color, right? So this is called as inheritance, whatever you have got uh, inherited from your parents, okay, that is called as inheritance. So in the same way, when it comes to coding, okay, uh, a lot of codes can be reused, okay, uh, from one class to the other class or from one, uh, uh, you know, one small portion of the code to the other uh, portion of the code, just trying to make you understand what it is, right? So this is called as inheritance. And uh, this is, this helps a lot uh, when it comes to coding because, as I told, inheritance supports code reusability. Right, so you don't have to write the code again and again. You can just use the codes which are present in the uh, other portion of the uh, entire program. Right. One more example, what I would like to give you is uh, yeah your properties. Right. So let's say your father is a, a, a very big shot and a, a lot of money he has gathered and the same money you'll be able to uh, uh, you know use and do a lot of things over here and uh, that is called as inheritance one more example is your android versions 
So with every update of your Android versions, you can see that uh, yeah, if it's Lollipop or if it's uh, KitKat, whatever it is, it will have the features of uh, you know, the previous version, right? So you can also see that it, it has inherited features, uh, no, basic or uh, the inherited features which has uh, got from the previous version, right? Of course, there'll be a lot of add-ons or the updates, but the basic version will be the similar, right? And uh, uh, the last one, what I'd like to give you an example is C++ itself. Right. So C++, uh, as I've already uh, told you in the previous videos as well. So uh, all the functions, functionalities, the packages, uh, or the functions, whatever you want to call it. Right. So whichever is present in C can also be used in C++. Right. So that is basically because it has got the inherited uh, things from C to C++. Right. So they have implemented all the things which is there in uh, C to C++. So this is again an example of inheritance. So uh, that's it. I hope you have understood the four basic things when it comes to object oriented programming concepts. So uh, in the next video, as I told, I'll be discussing uh, the things based on classes and objects. And I'll also be telling you how to implement all these four concepts uh, using classes and objects specifically uh, in C++. Right? So I hope you're uh, uh, able to understand this. And um, let's just uh, do a lot of experimentation based on these uh, concepts. Okay, and uh, till then, happy learning. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe and do click on the bell icon so that you get notified when the further videos are released. And also, check out our Instagram page and WhatsApp broadcast services. The links are in the description below.